My name is Alexandra Kogan, and I'm a communications professional in Washington, D.C. I grew up in a household that was interesting in the sense that my mom was a very lapsed Catholic. Uh, the family stopped going to church when she was very young. And my father immigrated from Russia in the 1970s and was Jewish. Um, my family was very secular, agnostic. To my parents, uh, success was getting the best degree possible and the best job possible. And so that was their advice to me growing up. But I always felt that there was something more and there was something missing. I first asked my mom who God was when I was about three years old. And uh, she said, uh, he's an omnipotent being in the sky. And that was about it. Um, but I still felt so restless growing up in high school. And I became really fascinated with the Catholic Church when I was, I would say, about 10th grade. And I don't know why. I look back and I realize that that was God's first knock on my heart to come and, and, and investigate him in the church. And I asked my mom to take me to, to Mass. That was my first Mass. And uh, we went to a diner afterwards. And there was uh, an elderly man who I'd recognized from church. He was there with his family. And he came over to us, didn't know us at all, just had seen us in church. And he said, me and my grandchildren are going camping next week. Do you and your mom want to go? And that was my first experience of someone being incredibly selfless and welcoming. And I'd never experienced that growing up. And I looked at my mom and I said, whatever he has, I want that. Um, but she was a bit uncomfortable with the church. I think uh, um, she had questioned a lot of the church's teachings growing up. So that was kind of it. Uh, then when I went to college, again, I started to ask more questions. Who is God? Where do I belong? What's going to give me happiness? And I remember graduating from Georgetown. It was my dream school, and I was sitting at the best PR firm in the world. I had everything that my parents told me I needed to be happy, and I wasn't. I was still so restless. I still wanted to know who I was and where I came from. And that's when I seriously started to ask questions of who God was and how I could come to the church. When I first started to understand who Jesus was and what Christianity was, I, I came across evangelical publications uh, and materials. And I think why it could be so difficult sometimes to talk about Christ and your relationship with Him is because it is such an intimate relationship that everyone has in their heart with their Creator. And sometimes to even talk about it seems uh, like a violation. It's such a sacred bond. At the same time, though, I think a focus on bringing people to Christ and then backing away and saying, you know, this is what led me to Him. Go discover Him for yourself. It's, it's the greatest romance that you'll ever have in your life. And I think setting people up for that relationship um, is maybe the most effective. I actually had this weird belief I picked up somewhere that if you were Jewish, you couldn't come into the church. Uh, so I apprehensively uh, approached the church and um, tried to hide my Jewish background, uh, but I quickly learned that that was silly because, um, you know, the, the, obviously you can't come to know Christ unless you know where he comes from uh, and his Jewish identity. I think my experience is, is hearing the story from Saint um, Maria Jose Escriva, where he talks about um, going past, I believe it was um, a, a poor chapel, and there was a man in adoration. And he asked the man, what are you doing? And the man just said, I'm looking at God and he's looking at me. And really that's the most beautiful expression of faith, more so than delving into the depths of uh, Catholic intellectualism. And I think when I heard that, it was a reminder for me to put down the book to go to God in adoration and just say, God, help me believe. And I would just say that prayer over and over again, very inarticulately. Um, but I think that uh, it is true that the more you knock and the more you seek, the more Christ is watching you, trying to come to him, and he will reciprocate through love and understanding. And that's something that you can't find in a book. It just takes faith. And it's hard to take that leap of faith if you're coming from a secular environment. It was very difficult for me um, growing up in a very science-based uh, reality where you can't have a relationship with someone who's not sitting physically in front of you. And I think that's been the most beautiful experience is realizing that Christ is as alive to me today as he was 2,000 years ago to the apostles. I did RCIA twice because I was so determined to master as much as I could before baptism. I thought it was this big test uh, that you had to ace. Um, but I met a Dominican uh, brother who told me, um, it's not a test, just imagine yourself as a baby in the arms of the Father. And that's when I kind of put down the books and stopped trying, trying to obsessively study uh, and just accept God's call into the church. So uh, thanks be to God, I was baptized uh, on April 19th, 2014. Mm -hmm.